So in today's episode of Why Buy It When You Can Build It For Three Times The Cost, we're going to see what it takes to make an animated version of this Pixel Pal using a RGB matrix module. So these are those modules commonly found on eBay, and I can assure you they're not as hard to work with as I had initially thought, thanks to a lot of work from other people on the web. And this looks a lot better in person, even with some diffusion. The camera is kind of overly sensitive picking up some things. So if I desync the refresh or the shutter speed of the camera, uh, you can just see that emphasized with what the camera's you know playing tricks on you. But it's not that bad. Uh, so we'll see what it takes to actually make this. Okay, to get started, let's look at some of the hardware first. So. I need a RGB panel and I'm going to do the 64 by 32 since it's it's kind of the common of the bigger sizes and I'm going with the P3 size which is the pitch spacing 3 millimeters center to center between each RGB LED. This will give me a good density so if I'm close to the screen I can actually still tell what it is. And with this density, we can get 32 pixels wise. If you, if you get something smaller, like 16 by 32, well, most of these sprites actually just don't fit on there, especially from the 16-bit generation. Uh, so this is 116 scan. That's going to be important later. And this is our screen. And to connect to it, I'm actually going to use Brian Locke's D1 Mini Matrix Shield Board. Uh, it makes, makes quick work of interfacing the ESP8266 with the rear of one of these boards. And if you follow his tutorial, it's uh, pretty good. So everything is answered there. I recommend just doing that. So the sketch that I'm going to pull from is his peanut butter jelly time dancing banana sketch, which is on his GitHub. And if you pull this sketch out and look at it, uh, this is essentially the edited version for Sonic, but the layup is all the same. So you have the defined pins for the LED matrix and you get to just comment out the matrix you're not using and uncomment the one you're going to use. So the 64 by 32 here and these are the extra pins that are being used. So I'm using this bottom option. And then if we look at the big scope of everything, so you can see where there is every frame is defined and this is one frame of that animation. So this is a not a good way to store this because we actually can only store like nine frames because we quickly run out of flash memory because of this way every frame every single pixel is stored in a hex value in this array and this is all 2048 pixels for each frame so we make one frame two frame you define all your frames and here at the end of the sketch This is where the frame animation loop is. So I'm trying to get more animation by looping between Sonic looking at you, then away, uh, then going into his hands at his side state, and then tapping his foot, and then reverting back down to so we can loop over again. Uh, but that's the basic for this animation. It's it's very straightforward. Uh, so let's get those pixels ex extracted and convert them to these hex values. And how do you do that? So again, the easiest way is to find them extracted somewhere online. So I found these just by Googling and it was the first result. Spriter's Resource for Sonic Mania, uh, just the Sonic the Hedgehog sprites, and then here they are. So if you click this and download it, open up with paint, everything is in scale as it should be. So you actually have to just pick the animation that you want that you can you know, do a complete loop in eight or nine frames. And I'm gonna do that with the, from the idle to board animation. And it's gonna be these nine frames, essentially. We're gonna use a briefer version of Sonic's tap animation because we just don't have enough memory to do it. So this is how you make that frame. So I'm gonna just zoom in and select Sonic's pixel area. Make sure I grab it. And I'm gonna do a new instance of this and I'll zoom in. And I wanna make sure I'm in this orientation 64 by 32 so it matches that orientation. So if you do this, if you flip this 90 degrees, it does not work if you flip these numbers and 
the method of how the image is displayed because the frame buffer and the way it draws, it draws in sectors, it doesn't work. You'll get some weird issue and I'll, I'll show you that. So we're going to paste Sonic in, we're going to rotate him so he fits the 64 by 32 and then I'm just going to reduce this window size so it matches our pixel size for frame. Um, the background of Sonic I want to be off so it needs to be black and then I'm just going to make sure I center him and you'll have to figure out where you're going to key your frame from. So I keyed him from his, the heel of his shoe, just so every frame's got a center reference point. And then you're going to save this as, you know, frame one. And to convert this, I it's also in the example sketch off Brian's GitHub page. But if you go to Rinky Dink Electronics, do choose file, the frame you just made. And we do make file, download that, and we can open it. And this is it. We're just gonna grab this middle section, copy and paste that, and put that as the first frame definition. So if I just blow this up again, you put it right here. And that's it. So what's the point of this? It's not to have something in the background when I talk to the camera, although it is good for that. It's actually when I'm working on an arcade and let's just say I don't want to do artwork on the side I have the option of using an active matrix and making this an active panel so I can embed this into the body and then have this display whatever I want so in this case if we stick with the theming this could be like the Sega logo in pixel art uh, so that's actually what this idea came down to but this is just a simple tutorial to get you used to and you know other uses for these active matrix screens since if you're not building a jumbotron if you just want a couple panels uh, they're really neat to play around with and they can make some pretty neat accessories to put on your shelf so thanks for watching